Pipe 4 Helldivers 2 is finally a little bit slowed down. It's not gone, not by any means. There are still more than 200,000 players playing this game daily, and that's only on PC. But it's not as crazy as it was on launch. Plus, the game is finally working right now, and it is the best time as ever to take a look at this game and decide whether it is worth it to buy right now or not. And as always, as every single one of my videos, I'm going to be giving you the answer right away to not waste your time and give you time to play this game or do anything else. And the answer is yes. Helldivers 2 is absolutely worth it to play. The hype was real and well deserved. However, as always, this is not a perfect game and there are some things that you need to be aware of before you're gonna jump into it. And now let's discuss both good and bad. First things first, what Helldivers even is. Helldivers 2 is a sequel to well, Helldivers 1 and is a PvE co-op shooter. You basically play with three other players, jump into the missions on a different planets and complete different objectives, fighting with an army of bugs or automatons. At least at the moment, it is highly likely that there will be more factions in the game in the future because it it was in the first game, and plus because of the map of the game is almost completely unused. So we start with only these two factions. And in its core, this is a grinding game. Yes, you basically grind the missions, level up, gain different currencies, unlock different weapons, different armor, and, and of course stratagems, which are basically your abilities. And at its core, the game is extremely simple. Gameplay loop looks like that. You have your own spaceship, which is basically your hub of operations. You open the galactic map, you choose a planet, and choose a place where you want to land and complete different missions. You choose your loadout which are basically your two weapons, your main and your secondary, your grenade, your stratagems, and your booster. You choose your landing zone and you land on the planet. And of course, you can use it with three other players if you're playing COD. You land on this planet and you usually have around 40 minutes to complete everything that you want to complete on this map. You can take as much time as you want completing all the main or side objectives. And more objectives you complete, more XP and more currencies you will get. While doing so, you will be constantly attacked by enemies. It can be terminates, which are basically the bugs, or automatons, which are basically a robot. Robots. And of course, both of them are on different planets because they are occupying different sides of the galaxy. And depending on the difficulty, you are going to have different amounts of enemies attacking you in different numbers and different varieties. And yet, there are a lot of different varieties of enemies. And where the game truly shines is in its combat. Game is quite clunky. This is not a twitch shooter where your fast reaction is imperative. You are actually animation locked because you actually need to aim your gun. And the recoil is very real. And you can actually look very fast, but your character needs to rotate and actually aim his weapon in order to actually shoot. You actually have different damage models like limb damages. And overall combat is extremely fun, especially when you're going to start using stratagems. Stratagems are basically different power-ups that you can actually call down from space. Because the ammunition is quite limited, it can be different weapons, it can be different turrets, or even orbital bombardments. Like you can request an airstrikes or, or just laser everything on the ground. You have a limited number of those and they are usually on a cooldown. But witnessing those stratagems in correct use is extremely satisfying, especially with an amazing game sound design. This game sounds incredible and you feel like you're in the middle of a battlefield against all odds. And you're fighting against all odds. Fighting this game feels absolutely incredible. And that is the real reason of the hype. But depending on your squad composition, it can be extremely satisfying to win different combat encounters or even to lose them. Because you have very limited amount of respawns, you can actually lose the missions. But now let's talk about one very important thing and it is its difficulty. Because the game's difficulty is deciding factor on how effective you are in combat and how long you can actually play this. And difficulty in this game is, well, a bit all over the place. Because you actually have nine difficulty levels, but they are very different depending whether you're playing against terminates or bugs or against automatons. Bugs is a little bit of an easy mode. And for example, if you're gonna go on level five hard mode against bugs, if you have an okay squad, you can keep your cool and you can defeat basically anyone. But if you're gonna go with hard, with an okay squad against automatons, you're screwed. Because automatons are incredibly difficult to fight with. And I'm not even talking about the hell dive difficulty, because that's literally a hell on earth. Difficulty can go to an extreme levels. Not that you are required to play on higher difficulties, but you will want to play on higher difficulties. And to be fair, the difficulty curve the game actually allows you to play with is very satisfying, because you actually unlock different levels of difficulty as you play to the game. Like for example, you can not go immediately to the hell dive. You actually need to complete the missions on every difficulty level before that. And that is a very good way to play this game. And overall game feels extremely amazing. But now let's talk about two things that I did not like. And well, first thing is it true for every game. It's not hell divers fault. It's literally true for basically every game. And it is a squad composition. If you're playing this alone, it will become quite difficult on higher difficulty levels and basically impossible to complete. And if you're playing with friends, it is 
extremely fun. This game should be played with friends and it is very, very, very fun gameplay, especially because of the friendly fire that is on, always on. But with randoms, yeah, the experience can be wildly different. Some of the renders that I joined used the voice chat and they were very, very helpful and the matches were extremely fun, but most of them were not. They would just move to the different objectives, ignoring you completely, no matter whether you use voice chat or not. And often this caused the mission fails. And I'm not even talking about leaving the game's meat game. Yeah, that is true for every game. And that was actually quite ruining the experience. And because the game on high difficulties basically required you to play with other players, yeah, that was a bit of disheartening. Also, despite the game being practically fixed on a PC, the match times, the finding the match times can be a little bit long sometimes, despite having more than 200,000 players almost at all times. And that was a bit weird for me, because I almost always needed to wait for a few minutes in order to find a good match. And mostly, there were not a good matches. It was much easier for me to find an actual ongoing match on a map and join myself rather than go to just a random match. But that's a little bit of a nitpick. Now let's talk about an elephant in the room and it is monetization. Okay, this is also a little bit of a mix pack. Now, monetization in this game is happening in a few different ways. One is through the shop. You actually have a shop where, where different type of armor and weapons are being sold. This And these armors and weapons have different stats, different damage models. And, and to be fair, I did not see what type of weapons are there and how powerful they are. But some people are saying that they are powerful. Now, this is a hearsay. Don't just believe me. And don't just take this as a fact. But there is also another way of monetization in this game. And it is through battle passes. Yes, battle passes. That is in plural. At the moment of playing this game, at the moment of the recording, I have three battle passes available. One is completely free, which is okay, which is fun. It has a lot of different things, including the paid currency as well. And you actually progress through this battle pass by unlocking medals in the game. And you spend different amounts of medals on this battle pass to unlock different things. And as you progress through this battle pass, you need more and more and more and more medals. But you also become better and on more difficult missions, you also unlock more and more medals. You also have personal and major orders available as well. Personal orders are basically your daily missions. And when you complete them, you gain a certain amount of medals. And the major orders are basically an order for everyone who plays the game. And this usually requires a cleaning up different planets, defending different defending different outposts and things like that. And they usually take a few days and they're usually happening once in a few days, but you gain more medals. And if you took part in the major order, but you are getting these medals. Now, issue starts with the paid battle passes. And I really did not like that because of a few things. First, paid battle pass will cost around 1,000 in-game units, which is basically around 10 bucks, regular thing. But you actually have two battle passes available there. So you need around $20 to unlock this. But if the regular battle pass has eight pages, I mean free one, eight pages of different content to unlock, each of the paid battle passes has only three. So meaning that a little bit more than a third for compared to the free one for around 10 bucks. And here we have two divisions. So basically, if you want to pay for this, if so, if, if you basically want to support this game and pay for something, if you are not getting enough of new things, however, if you are getting a small amount of things, this basically discourages you from getting a paid battle pass and you just ignore completely, you just ignore microtransactions completely. So that is a bit of a weird thing that I didn't understand. And some of those paid battle pass things look quite great. Like for example, at the moment, I have a cyborg skins available, which looks quite great, but I'm not really inclined to buy paid battle pass. Plus also free battle pass never has enough points to get even single battle pass for, by basically playing the game, which is also strange. I think free battle pass should have enough currency, paid currency available to be able to unlock the paid one, paid battle pass. This is just me nitpicking and mumbling. Overall, do I think that this is a great game? I do. Do I think that this game will live a long time? I do. Because this game has in-game events all the time. This is a live service game and the stories that people and the gamers are creating in this game are insane. I think this game will live very long time because of its support and because of support of the content creators. This game is hilarious and serious at the same time and it calls and also extremely cinematic. And also they said that this is not a full price game. This is a $40 game. So yeah, I highly recommend this game. And if you like space games, I have a list of 27 space games that you can watch right now and play it as well. Or if you just want the YouTube to choose the next video for you, you can click it right here. And yeah, don't forget to subscribe right here as well because yeah, this helps me a lot and you're going to get a lot of great videos in the near future. So yeah, I'm going to see you in the next one. Take care.